I hate when people say, oh, work harder. No, work smarter. Because I see way too many of you working so hard, doing mostly all the right things. But then when your leads, when your potential customers, when they get to your website and they're faced with that proposition, am I going to buy or not? Oh, it's bad. It's bad. And you're losing them. And you don't know you're losing them. Welcome, everybody, to The Chris Harder Show, where we are making you unapologetic about your pursuit of success, knowing that when good people like you make good money, they can then do great things. My name is Chris Harder, and several times per week, I will bring you epic guests, solo episodes, and every single tool, trick, and skill set you need to grow your business, grow your money mindset, and to grow your wealth to levels that you have never reached before. I've ended up in a unique place in life where I've got the experience, the connections, and all of the secrets that it takes to be successful. And I'm lifting the curtain to reveal it all to you in an effort to help put you in a position of abundance so great that you can then be as generous as possible. So let's lock arms and let's get started. Hey, everybody, welcome back to The Chris Harder Show, where we absolutely believe that both prosperity and generosity can and must coexist. All right, entrepreneurs, I'm talking to you. All of you trying to build a business right now, I'm talking to you. And here's what I want to share. There's a lot of things that we do as entrepreneurs that we should not be doing. And even in the beginning, like when you're trying to save money, when you're trying to put it all together, when you're, you're trying to scrape by, I know it feels like you should be doing it all yourself, but you shouldn't. And I'm going to share three things with you tonight that, you know, from personal experience, like our brands way back when, and then watching other people start from from day one, from ground zero. Three things that entrepreneurs should never, ever, ever be doing themselves. Now, before I share these three things, I want to put a a caveat here, an asterisk. I want to say these are three things that 99% of entrepreneurs should never be doing themselves, okay? So we're going to leave a 1% window here in case you happen to be good at one of these things, in case you happen to be the world's freakiest, fastest learner, in case you just happen to be the, the, the one out of a trillion people that is like, you know, good at everything you touch, then maybe you can do these things. But even if you can do them well, I'm going to make an argument you probably shouldn't be doing them. So the first thing is this. Of the three things that entrepreneurs should never be doing themselves, you should never be doing your taxes, your bookkeeping, and your payroll. Telling you, you should never be doing your taxes, your bookkeeping, your payroll. Here's why. Number one, there's just too much room for mistake. Let the experts do this. Number two, I would say at least 75% of you don't even have the right makeup, the, the right mindset, the right type of brain to do this well. And that's not an insult. I fall in that category. It's because most entrepreneurs are visionaries. 75% of entrepreneurs are visionaries. Visionaries don't really have the brains for the details, the eyes for the details. And this is tedious doing bookkeeping, doing your taxes, doing your payroll. That takes extreme detail. It takes experience. It is one of those tasks that is so inexpensive to hire that you should for sure from day one be letting the experts do it. And it's also one of those tasks that although you feel like you might be saving money by not paying the bookkeeper, although you may feel like you're not saving money by you know doing your own taxes on TurboTax or whatever it is you do, I would make the argument that you are losing at least the same amount of money you think you're saving by making a small mistake here or a small mistake there or not getting expert input. I understand taxes. I understand money really freaking well. Like it is well within my proficiency, more than the average entrepreneur. I don't do mine. I've never done mine. I remember using Bob's tax service. I'm not being funny. I'm not making this up right now. One of my very first businesses was, I had a couple of rental properties when I was like 21 years old. And then of course I worked as well, right? I got kicked out of college and I had a job. I didn't do my own taxes. I didn't figure it out even though I easily could have because you know it's one of my proficiencies. I went to Bob's tax service in Green Bay, Wisconsin in a basement where he had a nice little desk set up and all that stuff, but it was like rafters everywhere. I'm telling you, even back then I understood, let the experts do it. And guess what? I remember him giving me advice, stuff that 
I've leveraged today. I remember him saving me money, things I wouldn't have thought of myself. I remember him giving me counsel. Hey, here's where we could stretch it. Here's where we could do that. So shout out to, to Bob's tax service from 100 years ago. I'm telling you, it's like 25 years ago, but it's funny because even then I knew. So that's the first one. Don't do your taxes, your books, or your payroll yourself. The second one, you should never be doing your own Facebook or Instagram ads. Now, this is one where you might be like, yeah, but Chris, a decent agency or a decent ad buyer who's going to do this for me, they're going to charge me at least $2,500 a month plus my ad spend, at least $3,500 a month plus my ad spend. I can't afford that. So then what do I do? No ads? The answer is you don't do ads until you have the $2,500 or the $3,500 a month plus your ad spend to invest in it. And I know you're like, but Chris, that's 3,500 bucks a month that actually could have been going towards the ads if I just learned it myself. Guys, I've seen behind the curtain. I've seen behind the algorithm, so to speak. Remember, I own part of a digital marketing agency, 4West Digital, shout out to you guys. And what Nick and Jim and especially Andy know and understand from years of trial and error, literally, that's how you learn Facebook ads, you spend, you burn money, trial and error, split testing. Do these five ads work? All right, let's, two out of the three are hitting. Now let's put more money between two of the three. Are they working? Great. Some stopped working. Go back to square one. You guys are, I promise you, you'll think, you'll feel upfront like you're saving money by doing your own Facebook and Instagram ads. But the rule of thumb is, don't do them until you can afford to have a, at least a knowledgeable person do it for you. You don't have to get the biggest, best agency right away, but at least someone who fully understands. Now, here's why. It's not just about the return on your investment. That's one obvious reason. But here's one you didn't think about that you don't think about. When Facebook doesn't like something you do with your ads, especially if you're advertising like, like fitness or weight loss or anything financial, they put the clamp down on you. They take your account away. First, they suspend it, and you can't get a hold of anyone to appeal it. And whenever they decide to let you out of ad jail, then, if they ever do, then you're under close watch, under scrutiny. And if you make another mistake that they don't like, then they suspend you again, or they take away your ads account altogether. So there's a lot at stake. It's not just, oh, I ran some wrong ads, and I didn't get a good ROI on it. It's that you could ruin your entire ads account forever, have it taken away forever. And if you've ever had lost an account or login or anything like that, you know, once you have something taken away, if you're putting Facebook in jail, Instagram jail, there's no getting out unless you know someone there. There's no getting out until they decide to let you out. So there's too much at risk. You're going to spend more money than you would have spent with a professional. And you really run the risk of having your account suspended or taken away altogether. And the third thing that entrepreneurs should never be trying to figure out on their own and do their own is building their own websites and writing their own copy. Now, if you don't know what writing your own copy is, copy is literally the art of words that get people to buy. I see so many horrible websites and so much horrible sales copy out there, and I'm not calling anybody out. I'm just saying, you think, hey, my graphics look good. People are going to buy. Hey, I've got a compelling call to action. People are going to buy. No, you need the pros that understand the right order, the right flow, the right sizing, how many paragraphs or how many sentences you can have before you have to have a break so that the psychological mind reads it correctly and and doesn't get bored and, and bounce off your site. Not to mention the beautiful art of sales copy where semantics cause people to take action, but only if you are setting it up in the right way, walking them down a path in the right way, asking for the sale in the right way. I see way too many of you working way too hard. You know, I hate when people say, oh, work harder. No, work smarter. Because I see way too many of you working so hard, doing mostly all the right things. But then when your leads, when your potential customers, when they get to your website and they're faced with that proposition, am I going to buy or not? Oh, it's bad. It's bad. And you're losing them. And you don't know you're losing them. You don't know they're hitting the website and you don't know that they're not buying. That's the worst part. You don't know how bad your bucket is leaking and leads are hard enough to get. Converting them, that's not where you want your leaky bucket. So you should not be building your own websites and you should not be writing your own sales copy. It is an art. Investing the few thousand dollars 
to have somebody at least, like I said, doesn't have to be the best pro in the world, but who's proficient in it. Write your sales copy, your sales page for you is the best money you will ever, ever spend. Now, do you guys know what opportunity cost is? With these three things, a lot of the points I made, it was, hey, you could lose money. Hey, you could have your account taken away. Hey, your ROI isn't going to be good. You would have been better off paying a pro to do it. Hey, you're going to make a mistake on your taxes. It's going to cost you too much. Hey, you're going to, you're going to miss you know, a deduction here or a, a rule you could have bent there. Well, opportunity cost is literally the unseen cost or the unseen opportunity that you don't know you're missing by doing these things yourself. Opportunity cost is sneaky. Opportunity cost means you missed the opportunity to sell this person. You missed the opportunity for this deduction. You missed the opportunity to convert the sale. You missed the opportunity to bring more leads in by doing your Facebook ads. You don't know right? That's why they're unseen. That's what opportunity cost is. You don't know what you're missing. And so the pain point sometimes isn't great enough to make you wake up and realize somebody else should be doing this for you. That's why I'm doing this episode. Each and every one of you listening right now, you have leakage all over in the form of opportunity cost. You are costing yourself time and money and customers and leads, and you don't even know it. You don't feel it. You may think, hey, things are going pretty decent. But they could be going so much better, but there's no way to measure that. It's the unknown. But you know how you learn it? You know how it becomes known? By letting the professionals do these three things for you. Your taxes, books, and payroll. Your Facebook ads and Instagram ads. And building your own websites and writing sales copy for you. And the last thing I'll add to this is, remember the value of your time. I'm not going to go deep on this today because I've done this on 100 episodes. But every single hour that you spend at work, every single hour you spend trying to make money, that has a value to it. And that exact value, I'll give you the formula again. Here's how you get that value, by the way. You take your earnings goal for the year, divided by the number of weeks you want to work this year, divided by the number of days per week you want to work, divided by the number of hours per day you want to work. Let me repeat that. This is my formula. You take your overall income goal this year. You divide it by the number of weeks you want to work. You divide it by the number of days per week you want to work. And you divide that by the number of hours per day you want to work. That gives you your real accurate value to every single hour at work. And then once you know that value, the rule of thumb becomes this. If it's not income producing or joy producing, at that value per hour, then you're actually obligated to find an expert to do it for less than what that dollar amount is. I'm telling you, that'll change your life and that'll help you stop missing out with all of this opportunity cost that is unseen leakage that you are costing yourself right now. Hope this helps. I want nothing but the best for you. Success, let's go. When good people make good money, they do great things. Thanks for listening. Love and appreciate you. Thanks for listening. And if you loved this episode and know of someone else who is as successful as they are generous, please pass them on to me. It would mean the world to me if you help me get this cause and this message out to as many listeners as I can. So please, if you liked what you heard, it goes a long way if you take 30 seconds and leave me a five-star review and share this with your friends. I'll be forever grateful. And until the next episode, cheers to your success.